Hi, it's Alex here. Thank you for joining me today on my channel for a bit of sewing chat. Um, last time we spoke, I said that I was going to make a few tops to go with my brown jeans, and I've been very good. I have done that. Um, well, I've made one. Um, but before I go on to that, I'm just going to say thank you so much for all the comments about my hair. You have all been really kind. Um, yeah, it's you've kind of reaffirmed what I was feeling, really. So um, it's nice to be back to being a redhead again. I mean, this is very similar to my own colour. It's just a little bit more, I don't know, elevated. Um, so yeah, it's feeling good. It'd be interesting to see how it fades over time. It's supposed to last about six weeks or something. Um, and also as the dreaded greys come through, it'd be good to see how um, they're covered or not. I don't have too many, but why is it when you get greys, the ones you do get are always around here. Anyway, we're not here to talk about hair, we're here to talk about sewing. Um, so, I wanted to make a polo neck um, jumper, or if you're not British, a turtleneck. Um, and I had a little look at the patterns I've got in my stash, because I thought surely I must have a polo neck jumper in there. I have made the Jocko jumper before, but that was much more oversized. I wanted something uh, not massively fitted, but somewhere between the two and I've also made a, a Jarrah jumper or sweater, um, the Linden, various sweatshirts and I thought surely in amongst all of those one of them um, has a polo neck collar drafted and they they don't. Um, it would have been fairly easy to do one myself but I just thought why don't I just see what there is out there. Um, didn't really want to spend money on it which I didn't have to because I found a free pattern on um, Tasuti Fabrics uh, or Tasuti Patterns, not sure which they are, on their website and it's the Munro Turtleneck. I really like Tasuti Patterns. Um, I still really want to make the Oslo coat. I've made a couple of the dresses. I think the Claudia dress and I think the other one's called a Bondi. Yeah, something like that. Um, but they also have some free patterns, including the infamous Mandy Boat Tee, which I have also made. The pattern um, comes in three sizes, which again is pretty amazing when you consider it's free. Uh, the smallest goes from double small, or XX small, up to small. Pattern number two was small, medium and large, and size number three is large to double XL. So pretty broad um, range. I plumped the one in the middle. My measurements brought me out as a small, which is a remarkable. I don't think I've counted as a small for many, many years. Um, and it was dead easy to make. It was very similar to any jumper or sweatshirt type patterns, if you've ever made any of those before. Pretty straightforward. Show the, sh uh, sew the shoulder seams together. Show, show sew the arms, the sleeves on, and then you sew the whole thing together from sleeve hem to um, hem hem. I don't know where my words are today, um, but you know what I mean. So dead easy, and then you just attach the uh, polar neck on in exactly the same way you would with any neckband, really. I reduced mine down. I took about seven centimeters off because I didn't want one that folded over and I wanted it to be more, yeah, shorter really, rather than right up to the sort of top of your neck. Um, I probably should have taken a little bit more off. It's a slightly odd length. I'm going to see how it goes, and if it drives me nuts, I'll just unpick it and um, slice a bit off and shove it back on again. Uh, but the main thing I did with it, which I'm really pleased about, and, and I am really pleased that it's a fairly standard basic top, the sort of thing when you first start sewing you don't make for yourself because you think well I can just buy that anywhere. Um, but you know now I've been sewing a while actually I do want to sew those basics because I want them to be better quality in exactly the right colour I want and to fit me and all the rest of the reasons we sew. So I had said in one of my uh, vlogmas vlogs that I was dying to use this um, stripy zip from Lulu Designs and I intended to put it in the side seam and that's exactly what I did. 
so there it is um, I think originally I was going to put it in some green angora if you've watched any of my uh, previous videos you'll know that I bought a ton of this stuff in various different colors and the green wasn't quite such a good match because they were different types of green this is more olivey and that wasn't a very green green does that even make sense um but then i had a little brainwave and thought well actually it works pretty well with the ochre and i think it does um yeah so i really like how it turned out i think it has um yeah i mean it's just a slightly elevated basic isn't it with the with the visible zip i'm really pleased with how the zip turned out i used a tutorial on youtube um and it was called i think the channel is called note to self there's absolutely no point in me showing you how i did it because it's an absolutely superb tutorial nice and quick and clear and to the point perfect um so it was pretty straightforward. I've never done a visible zip before. I really like how it turned out. I love this ochre colour. It's a very me kind of colour. Um, and I feel it will go well with the brown jeans. Perhaps not everybody's cup of tea, those two combined, but I really like it. And I know that the next trousers I'm going to make are in grey flannel. And so this will work really well with that. So at least I've got two options. It'll go with blue, um, bog standard blue jeans. So I'm sorted on that, on my kind of plan to make sure everything works really well. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I know it'll be one of those that gets a lot of wear. And if I have to change that neck, it's it's not going to be the end of the world, is it? Um, I really appreciate pattern companies giving us free patterns because, you know, they don't have to, do they? And um, yeah, I mean, who doesn't need a polo neck jumper in their lives? So I really love that. Um, I'm finally finished this dress. I've banged on about it enough, so you don't need to hear about it anymore. But this is the Armadale dress in the uh, Atelier Brunette twill fabric that I love. Really happy with it. I showed you on um, one of the Vlogmas vlogs that I'd bought some ochre, sort of gingery coloured um, teddy bear fabric, which Jay from the Candon Stitch had also bought, and that completely influenced me off I trotted and bought it because I again ochre who doesn't love that um I'd talked about uh, making an Oslo coat out of it but over Christmas and New Year I realized that I kind of really don't need another coat what I could do with is a pretty casual jacket uh, the sort of thing you can just throw on, you've not got to worry about, you know, stick it on a hanger and make, it, make sure it's not covered in dog hair um, and I haven't crumpled it up and doesn't feel quite as hmm, formal is perhaps too strong a word, but just something a bit more casual. So I thought, right, okay, it's January, it's freezing cold, it would be great if I could make a jacket out of the teddy fabric. So I've been looking at patterns doing my usual uh, scouring of the fold line and I couldn't find anything that quite fitted the bill because lots of patterns for jackets are um, kind of formal or just shortened versions of coats or they've got quite a lot of detail I mean something like a um, denim jacket style with complicated pockets and all the rest of it I don't think it would work brilliantly in that kind of fabric I think it would be a bit of a pain I just wanted something pretty simple and I kept looking nothing was coming up and then a couple of days ago I got an email from Seamwork and I've got Seamwork membership and if you're not familiar with it the idea is that you have a, a monthly or an annual membership and you accrue credits one credit for each month you can use them um, against any of the patterns in their pattern library and they bring out two or three patterns every month and I saw this pattern for a cape which was made in a fabric a wool fabric but not dissimilar color actually um, and I thought wow that looks really good so just thought I'd show you where I've got to with this cape uh, please forgive the lighting in here I'm in my sewing room and it's 
six o'clock so it's dark outside and I don't have any professional lights by any means so who knows what colour I'm coming out as. Um, anyway here I am, uh, I've made the cape up, um, the only bit of lining that I've done at the moment because I'm self lining it is the bottom band which runs from the side front all the way around the back to the other side front I have doubled made two of those and attached them at the hem so that eventually so that's the hem there so eventually that will flip up and attach and my plan is that that will encase the self lining on the inside um, so all I've got to do now my arm slits are just pinned for the time being so what I'm going to do next is in effect make the same thing again minus the bottom band and then I will attach it um, basically running from the side of the front piece at the hem so along the hem behave along the hem up the centre front round the neck down the next centre front and the hem just to the end of this front panel here um, and then see what happens and hope it works out okay so I attached the lining yesterday and then this morning I've cut down my seam allowances and given it all a good press um, I am a terror for doing that before remembering to understitch so um, I'll have to do that now on a slightly reduced seam allowance um, but here's where it is at the moment I'm about to become headless again um, so here we are we've got the lining all on the inside um, with the bottom band so as we said yeah the, fr the front piece is all completed everything's um, pretty much ready to go and then the bottom band the uh, lining section which has been attached on the hem needs to be folded up and that will hopefully encase everything I'll show you that in a sec um, I'm toying about whether to add a weight at the bottom corners of these hems and maybe another one around at the back but I feel that it's stiff enough that um, especially because it's doubled and self-lined it's stiff enough that it's holding its own shape so I'm in two minds I'll see how I feel about that um, I don't want to top stitch the outer edge um, and I'm wary of I don't know if you can see it but the seam even though it's been pressed the seam is here and you get this kind of bagging out effect if you don't top stitch it and I'm not sure that under stitching will make all that much difference but I'm, again I'm going to see how that goes because I'd like not to top stitch it because ultimately there will be buttonholes and buttons on the front here and I'm probably going to do a bit of stitching in the ditch around the neckline where each of these seam lines appears um, just for sort of you know a couple of centimeters and see if that secures that enough so that I don't need to top stitch because I'd like to avoid it um, the only thing I did differently in terms of the self lining is that in order to um, make it work with the fabric I had I had to do the center back piece with um, a seam down the middle but that's not the end of the world um, I added a, a hook on the back because I am a devil and I never put my coats on hangers and the other thing I did was I just put a pocket can you see yeah there it is just put a pocket on the inside um, just a patch pocket and I just t tried it on and looked to see where my hand would naturally fall if I wanted to hide my phone or anything so that's the lining that's the outer um, uh, what I will have to do is reach through match up the um, arm slits on both pin them together and I will top stitch around there so this is a uh, lining side out, I've just put it on the mannequin to make it easier to show you. What I need to do with this bottom band, um, which is attached at the hem, is to flip it up. I have already pressed over um, my seam allowance along this top edge or bottom edge, depending on which way you're looking at it. So that's going to flip up, There's that is my hem there. So that's going to flip up and attach here. So. 
yeah, then it will become in line with the front section, kind of, like that, but hopefully a lot neater. So I've finished the cape now. It was fairly straightforward to make. Um, the fabric was really easy to use. Um, it was a bit thick under the sewing machine, but it coped with it with no problem. Um, and for any hand sewing, it was great because honestly, I actually did some quite big stitches. You can't see them at all because of the nature of that um, fluffy fabric. Uh, the only time I got into a bit of a problem was just at the end, in fact, which I didn't video. And that was when I was um, turning the bottom band, the lining part of the bottom band, to the inside and stitching it down. Unfortunately, I did it so that the, it was a, the inner lining was a bit shorter than the outer fabric. And that's one of the reasons why I was saying on the, um, my coat making tips vlog, that I don't like to do the bagging out method because I find that you either end up with a lining that's too long and drops down below the hem or is potentially too short and then you get that sort of bagging of the outer coat fabric and that's what happened with this. So it was a bit of a pain but all I had to do really was unpick it. I hung it on my mannequin, made sure everything was running absolutely smooth and flat and then uh, hand stitched it, did a quick, you know, massive great big stitches uh, before I top stitched it. So it worked out fine in the end, just reinforced why I don't like that kind of method really. Uh, but overall, what I have ended up with is not really something that fitted my original brief of casual, easy to throw on jacket. I mean, it is casual and it is easy to throw on, but it feels a little bit more of a statement kind of a jacket than I really envisaged. Um, maybe, I'm, maybe I've got that wrong. I just feel it's quite unusual. Oh. So you can probably tell that was a complete and utter disaster. Um, yeah, my camera fell off the tripod and smashed into the fireplace. So the screen is all broken and it was a Christmas present, so I've not even had it a month. So yeah, I'm really well and truly fed up. I've been on the phone to the insurance company, so let's hope that Hastings Direct do the right thing. Um, but they're sending somebody to, or someone in touch to have a look at it. I've still got to pay a hundred pounds excess, so <sighs> not very happy. Anyway, I thought I'd finish this um, off because I got this far and um, I'm gonna carry on, but this time I'm on my phone, so, you know, who knows what it's gonna look like. Anyway, I was talking about my cape and the upshot is that I like how it looks very much, but I can't help feel it's a bit more, I don't know, it's not kind of really what I envisaged, envisaged it would look like and I'm not 100% sure that I will wear it. I think it's gonna be one of those things that either I love it to pieces and wear it to death or you know you put it on every now and then and think why well, don't I wear this and then you kind of think yeah I know why so I'm not really sure I'm hoping I'm really hoping obviously that I will wear it maybe when it gets even colder it might be the ideal thing all nice and snugly um yeah so I'll see yeah the other thing I'm not so sure about it is what I will do about handbags because I quite like a cross body bag and I'm not sure how that works with a cape um, although maybe it'll fit underneath it. I'm going to take some photos of it in a minute, so I'll see. I'll have a play with it and see. Um, so, but yeah, I'm pleased I made it. And then uh, my plans for the next couple of weeks, apart from to mourn my camera, um, is to, I'm going to carry on making a few tops, fairly straightforward kind of wardrobe basics, really. Um, but I've got something coming up at the end of the month and I need to have a think about what I might like to wear for that in case that involves making anything. I think there's eight of us going um, at Petrus, which is a Gordon Ramsay restaurant. They bought it in a charity auction. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That should be really nice. We are going at lunchtime, not in the evening. <coughs> so 
I don't think it needs to be overly dressy and I'm I would always prefer to be um underdressed rather than overdressed it's I'm not going to be tippy tapping around in stilettos it's it's just not really me um but I do need to have a think about what to wear so that if I do need to make something I've got time to do it in um so yeah that's kind of on my mind I might abandon all immediate plans if I come up with something anyway I will leave that there um, and take these photographs and then I'm going to go and lie down in the darkened room and try to convince myself that eating chocolate to feel better about my camera is not a good idea. Oh, if you like my vlog, would you mind hitting the subscribe button and the belly thing that will notify you next time there's one here? I'd really appreciate it. I am so bowled over by how many people have subscribed since I started. I think I started in September and when I looked this morning I was like just under 800 subscribers which is phenomenal. So thank you very much everybody. I'll be back. Bye. <laughs>